Now, I, before we begin too much into this video, I want to take a look at some statistics that we have in the United States of America, which is actually quite staggering. Because right now, I'll just read what they say. Together, these systems, and we're talking about the, the, the penitentiary system, we're talking about the correctional system, we're talking about the jail system, we're talking about all of the systems inside of North America where people are incarcerated. These systems hold almost 2 million people. In 1,566 state prisons, 98 federal prisons, 3,116 local jails, 1,323 juvenile correction facilities, 181 immigration detention facilities, and 80, in 80 Indian County jail, country jails, as well as military prisons. This is everybody in the North America who's incarcerated. And the statistics back in the day used to be one in four men have been in jail at one point in their life. Now it's one in three men have been in jail for a time in the United States of America. In the United States of America, there are zillions of laws. We're talking jaywalking laws. If you decide to walk across the road at the wrong place, they could arrest you or fine you. They have cops that will hide behind trees and bushes and signs with very high-end radar detection that is able to get your precise speed. They're able to figure out the cars behind and the cars in front of you and they can zero in on you. <clears throat> and their job is to catch you and take you to jail. That is a problem because most of the people in jails are very good people. And they've done some very stupid things and they have ended up in a place where they definitely don't want to be in a place where we have the opportunity to reach them. And so when you do a search for the Hallelujah Scriptures prison ministries and you look at this thing that says Hallelujah Scriptures mission to prisoners, thousands receiving freely. You think to yourself, wow, there's a thousands of people that in this system that are receiving this, right? And when we go back to this number, there's almost 2 million people incarcerated in the United States at any point, at any given time, right? 2 million. So if we're giving thousands of these people free scriptures, isn't that the work of our creator? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that the, just the hand of our creator? But what if it isn't like that? What if it isn't true at all? What if these thousands of scriptures that are being given are simply the ones that people have paid for and said, give them to my son or my daughter or somebody in this system. I paid you for them. This is their number. We have accounts of people from 13 years when they have been a postal worker for the Hallelujah Scriptures that say they have not sent out prisoner Bibles like they say. They have not been giving out free Bibles in mass like they say. On top of that, they have donation fraud where they have pretended to feed the orphans, widows, and lepers. Now, have they ever done any of this anywhere? We don't know. But from the bank account records that we do have with enormous amounts of money in their account, some $400,000 in one account, hundreds of thousands in more, bank accounts everywhere, stolen property in New Jersey, stolen property in Arkansas, all stolen off the backs of donation fraud. What's worse is the people that are getting injured are our brothers and sisters in the prison system. I did a video last week that showed there were no prisoners that were receiving them. We have unopened letters of prisoner letters that just barely got opened, that just barely got found. And as we're going through them, these people are pleading and begging for scriptures. In one, of the, in one of the letters that did get responded to before the Hallelujah Scriptures ripped the ability of this family that was helping get these underground Bibles out, <clears throat> this family got one to this prisoner that said he had a better chance of getting a pardon from Joe Biden than receiving the Hallelujah Scriptures. And had this little family not gone on the rogue and opened up these boxes of things that were just left behind, these people would have never had that. And now we have at least 19 inmates that we know need the Hallelujah Scriptures. And I am working diligently and I believe I have found a source and the people are going to ship these prisoners these Bibles. They're going to get their Bibles.
That is a reason to celebrate because what has been lost has now been found. And these people will all be found. Okay, now let's take a look at what this video is all about because now we have the receipt books. Let us take a quick look at the front cover of this receipt book. This is the receipt book right here from 2015. And it is uh, it's actually 2014 right there. And I confirmed with the individual who this brought back the memories from. This was one of their ex-employees. Somebody who was led astray, somebody who was robbed as well, somebody whose life was completely destroyed at the hands of Deborah Weiss and Ken Max, whatever her name is, his name, they, they were destroyed. These people are evil. So I've confirmed these are all the receipts. And it was confirmed that federal, and federal correction people have to have a receipt. They have to, this is the receipts. If, you, if you're going to ship any Bible scriptures, any of this stuff to anyone anywhere in the United States of America, you're going to have to put a receipt with it because if not, they get rejected. I don't know if this is the case, but if this is the case, then what we have is we have a smoking gun that this is very, very bad because what I present you right here, and this will be the one video in a couple different videos because I think this is very important that we focus on the prisoners, that we focus on those who got hurt, that those who have been destroyed because they didn't get their scriptures. We have people locked up in chains. Their lives have been taken to strum. They've been stripped naked. They've been thrown into a place, given some tattered clothes on bad pillows, on bad beds, terrible food, locked away, never get to see their family. If they want to see their families, they have to pay. Their families have to pay enormous amounts. You may collect calls. You tax your family for every day that you're in jail. You destroy everyone around you just simply because you are in jail. <laughs> it's not just you're simply in jail. Every life around you is that. And these people could have had scriptures and they could have been reading this. Now, in October of 2014, this is the, the, the month I want to focus on right here. We had 42 prisoner scriptures that were sent in one month, 2014, right? And these are the receipts of them. Let's take a look at them just for the record. I want to see what we're looking at here. The year was 10, 14, 14, right? We're, we're in 2014. This went to an inmate named Juan Pablo Riviera. And they put $5 on it, right? And they put, his, he, they put his inmate number or a number, some identification number. Or actually, I don't know what that's from. But this is the very first one, right? And then it goes down to the next thing. This is all on the same day. 1014. We have Frank. I can't even read this handwriting. Johnson the third is, in, is incarcerated. He got scriptures. Ephraim, Ephraim Alameda. Right? All in the same day. Let's go to the next one. Um, it looks like this one got completely jacked because they used the carbon copy completely funky. But, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe they're not all like this. Oh, this is, yeah, because you can see they bled through it. See, this is the first time he's ever used the book. I could tell you this before because I've used this same book before. And if you don't put this little piece of paper inside the carbon, right, you write on every single one of them, which is what happened. Um, so maybe he got this figured out in the next one. But these are the next batch of people that went. And <clears throat> we have um, same, same date, guys. Same date. Cash. I think that is they're putting their inmate numbers on that. Is, I'm pretty sure what that is. So we have um, Y. Lee Yoreg, I think, or something of the sort. We have Michael Buchanan. Um, Allison. Yeah, M. You know, over here, Carrie Fisher, Cray Fisher, or Clay. Um, just keep going through these guys, just for the record. I just, I want this to be on the record. People need to see this, that this is a fraudulent company and they're doing fraudulent things. And if you think 40 Bibles inside a month, that there's definitely 40 people that paid to get their kids' Bibles, guaranteed all of these prison letters that are coming in, they're, most of them are getting shredded. Most of them are in the same box because prisoners are not getting this. In some of the prisoner letters, they were talking about there's there's no Bibles in this little group of these people. If the Hallelujah Scripture had truly been given these Bibles away all these years, then all of the there would be there would be Bibles everywhere. If there were really thousands of going every single month, and that that leads us to their their current grifts and their current scam of trying to take money for stamps for these people, guys. They have six hundred thousand dollars plus a million dollars of properties. 
then they yet, you know, they, they want stamps and then they have this little scam over in India, right? This little India scam where, you know, I, I've talked to the guy over there. So what they're giving them $2,000. They gave that from the people who gave that to them. The people probably gave for this little India place $25,000 and they gave them $2,000, barely that. And they're sitting there, oh, we need more, we need more, we need more. When these people are sitting on massive amounts of money, when Deborah Weiss, Weissel, whatever her fake name is, and Ken Max, whenever they stop buying prostitutes that are $500, then they could give up some of this money. You know, stop giving prostitutes their cash, my friends. That's what you need to do, Deb. Okay, Ronald C., whoever it is, he got a Bible. Is this the same date? No, this is the next date, 1028. So we've moved on. So this looks like a week later. So 14th to the, the 28th. We've got about 10 days in there. Okay. <clears throat> 14 days maybe. Continuing on. Daniel Warner. This, this writing looks a little better. I'm not sure. Maybe he's gotten better as his writing on this. But continue on. Curtis Vaughn. I mean, this is just, this is crazy that they've done 40 scriptures. Okay, that's the end of that. Okay, now let's go back to this right here. And so October, this was October, right? 42 scriptures. Now, as soon as I get the receipts, because I'm, I'm going to go over the November ones, I want to go over the receipts as well. Um, I want to go over receipts of everything that's in there, right? The smoking gun is that if this is a federal thing, you had to have this. This is the only people that they have shipped scriptures to in the, in the system. Folks, we are talking 2 million people incarcerated. And it, it goes up and it goes down, right? But it's, it's like good people. These people incarcerated are the people who need the kingdom and the people that are absolutely most receptive to the kingdom message. And these are the people we've been violating for 13 plus years buying strippers, hookers, whatever it is, organics, high end, all of their drugs, right? They, they say that she says she's a holistic doctor and it buys tremendous amounts of money that have been stolen, extorted over and stuck in, into her account. There's withdrawals. All of the evidence is located at the messianic hall of shame.org. And let us finish off with just that. And this is the messianic hall of shame.org. And you can find this and they're the reason the messianic hall of shame.org exists is because seven to 10 years ago, I don't even remember the dates, but I do have this investigation. There are videos on this site, messianic hall of shame.org. These people created a slam site, a kit site, a site that destroyed a whole ton of brothers that slandered them, lied about them, tried to destroy their families. And they were vicious. These monsters at the Hallelujah scriptures are vicious on their hits. I have never run across a more ruthless, vicious woman than Deborah Weiss in my life. She is capable of doing the greatest evil as she sits high up on her little perch of books and goes, oh, my scriptures are the best. Robin, my scriptures are the best. Nobody can uh, outdo them, right? And she's stolen them and then she's tucked herself into these Torah communities and then she tries to suck the soul and life out of any group that they get into. They always do. And these guys are thieves and they're robbers and they're liars and they will not inherit the kingdom unless they repent of what they're doing and stop doing the great evil. But they've done it for so many years. But now it seems as if Yah has handed them completely over. Now let's take a look at the Messianic Hall of Shame.org. These are the people we're dealing with right here. This is Deborah Weiss. This is a current picture of her. You can see that this is a face of evil. Believe it or not, this is the complete face of evil. This is a, a face of somebody who has orchestrated and has done a complete evil scam upon people for so many years. Maybe even some of the worst of it is the bodies and the corpses and the people they've laid in between all these years that they have burned. They burned to a crisp. People they've called CPS on. Government agencies they've called and they had people's lives destroyed. People that are on the run. People that know these people in New Zealand are scared to talk to them because they're so crazy. They have this little house way out in the middle. They have two houses, two little bunker houses, and they're extorting this and taking this, the, all of this money. They're grifting off of y'all's people and the fake donations. It is going to New Zealand and is buying them all this stuff for the end times because she's going to survive the end times. Robin and Max and Deb, Shalom, all of, the, all of these people that are the same, they're going to survive because they are not courageous in our creator. 
They are not, they don't understand that our creator will take care of them, but they're sitting there squirreling this up and lying to people. And had they had a real ministry and no, they do not have a real ministry because this man right here says they are not a ministry. He, he yells this, he reiterates it. Not once, not twice, but three times. They are not a ministry. They are in a business to sell books. It is right here on this site, guys. Look it up right below. It's the husband of Deborah Weiss, the gentleman who has allowed this all to happen. The individual who is out in these different chat groups pretending he's not the Hallelujah Scriptures, pretending that he's talked to both witnesses, which he has never ever come and talked to me ever, not once. We got a couple of threats from his wife before, but they've never said a word. And they've gone around to everybody and threatens everybody, but they never said a word to us. So this is the guy that allows it to happen and has been allowing this to happen for 13 years. He is completely complicit with it. He should be prisoned. He put, put in jail for this crime. I mean, all of these things, not only are they criminal activities that these people are involved in, but there's so much deception from every level of the Torah, like if you gave a rip about what the Torah said, then you should be abhorred with the actions of these people, right? If there were thousands and thousands of Bibles really going out, then we wouldn't have piles of inmate letters that I am having to help orchestrate to try to get the Hallelujah Scriptures to them right now. This is where we're at. These people have been shown, their masks have been ripped up and guys, share this around. Let people know the Hallelujah Scriptures is a criminal organization. The more people that we can help show the way, this is the right way forward. The Scriptures, as they are, are a great translation. There are teams of people that are very close to being done getting a complete new manuscript release to people who will print this up and will not be doing great damage to the people of Yah. They won't be sitting there with their hands out pretending that they have all these ministries when they're only patting their little squirrel cheeks up and over New Zealand. Guys, we have criminals in front of us. We must expose all of these people. The final gal right here, Danette Allen Brana. She has stolen money from the hands of people. She has had her credit card paid off. It is in all of the evidence. And that will be the final thing I'm gonna leave you with right here. Everything that I'm saying is in text. It is their own bank statements that speak. It is everything. We have the disclosure of Ted Ramp, a, an extremely documented, scribed out event of over a decade ago of a very reputable man. His name is Ted Ramp, who was the president of Hallelujah Scriptures to very much begin with. Read that, guys, if you want to get great. Or there's videos. I, I read this for you. I go over this with you. And there's even an interview with Ted Ramp further on down. And we talk about all of this. Everything that's in here, folks, all of their bank statements, all of the documents, putting them together. Hands That Love is a fraudulent corporation that is bound to them. They have more shell accounts. ToBeSaved.com is more of Max and Ken's uh, donate. Donate here, right? This is how they drew the people of Yah in and have tried to entrap them. The best thing you can do is get away from these people and understand they are a criminal organization. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Pass this around. I'm out.